Hello everyone, welcome back to Species Spotlights with Mr. Chris and Miss Bethany. In last week's video, we said we were planning on doing two videos a week, one species spotlight and one ecological concept. After seeing how long it takes to make a video, we've decided to just do one video a week. Usually these videos will be species spotlights, but we may decide to throw an ecological concept in there if we feel that would be useful. This week, we are continuing with our spring ephemeral wildflower theme and focusing on a group of species in the genus Trillium. If you're familiar with the way living things are classified, you will know that when I say genus, I'm referring to a group of closely related species. Think of different species in the same genus as evolutionary cousins. Plants in the genus Trillium are native to North America and Asia. There are about 50 species found in the United States, with up to nine of those being native here in West Virginia. Trillium are perennial plants, meaning that individual plants come back every year. They bloom from early April to May. The name trillium comes from the Latin prefix tri, meaning three. Can you think of any other words that use the prefix tri? How about tricycle, a bike with three wheels, or triangle, a shape with three angles and three sides? As such, the flowers have three large leaf-like petals, which can be white, pink, red, or maroon, and are arranged in a whorl around the center. The flowers also have three large pointed sepals. Sepals are the outermost leaves around a flower and are usually green. Sepals act primarily as protection for the flower when it's in its bud. Each trillium rhizome produces a single flower, making the presence of this spring ephemeral a special sight. The fragrance of trillium flowers differs depending on the species. Some species, such as the sessile trillium, tend to spell musty to faintly carrion-like. Carrion is another word for decaying animal flesh. Yuck! Given their less than pleasant smell, these flowers are pollinated by insects which feed on carrion, especially carrion flies and beetles. Other species, though, such as the large-flowered trillium, smell fruity and are pollinated by bees. Once pollinated, a fleshy six-angled fruit develops. Inside the fruit are small brown seeds. These fruits attract ants, which carry them off as food and help disperse the seeds. Do you remember what other spring ephemeral we discussed that is dispersed by ants? If you remember from last week, it is the bloodroot. Trillium plants have been historically used as an herbal medicine. A common name for trillium is the birthroot gets this name because it was used historically to help induce labor in pregnant women. Other groups, such as Native Americans and early European settlers, used trillium to control bleeding and intestinal discomfort. Another use of trillium has been to treat sore and inflamed joints. Currently, some species of trillium are listed as threatened or endangered. Note: Picking parts off of a trillium plant can lead to the death of the whole plant, even if the rhizome is left undisturbed. It is best to enjoy trillium flowers without disturbing them. Remember, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints. Some trillium varieties are cultivated, though, and can be found in wildflower gardens. Species like the white trillium are commonly grown and are good for attracting bees and other pollinators. These plants require partly to fully shaded areas and low to average soil moisture. One thing to note, if you are planning on growing trillium of your own, is that most trillium for sale in nurseries are collected from the wild. If you are buying some, it is best to make sure they are propagated by the nursery and are not collected in the wild because, like I said earlier, some species of trillium are threatened and endangered, and possession or collection of these species is illegal. That was our species spotlight of plants in the genus Trillium. Trillium are blooming at the time of the release of this video, and Miss Bethany and I saw a bunch at the Uffington portion of the rail trail here in Morgantown. They are quite a beautiful sight and are easy to spot on the hillsides and around ephemeral streams and waterfalls. If you find yourself there, keep an eye out for them. Thank you for spending some time with us today. Our sources we used for research are in the video's description if you want to read more about Trillium. Also, follow the Mountain Stewardship and Outdoor Leadership School's Facebook page for even more outdoor education content. Everyone stay safe and healthy. We will be back next week with our next Species Spotlight. Have a great day and don't be afraid to get off the web and explore the outdoors while practicing social distancing.